it's morning again. Uncle Oleg is driving to work. The sun is shining. I can't get enough sleep. Uncle Anatoly is already waiting for me. I decided to start this day in this unusual way while I'm driving. First of all, let's get down to the most frequent question from beginners. What kind of spray gun should I choose? I choose, or rather I use, China-made spray guns. This one I use for primer. I used to prime with a 1.7 nozzle. Nowadays, for some reason, it seems to me it's unnecessary. I prime by not very thick layers. I prime 1.4 and mix the primer, making it slightly more liquid. What I have here is an HVLP spray gun. By the way, I will not claim it really is HVLP. But it's not the one Valery has. Uh -huh. mm. And this one is HVLP, right? The nozzle here is also 1.4. That means I paint with it as well. I use these spray guns. They totally suit me. And for a start, I would recommend to beginners to start with such a spray gun. How can you determine if a China-made spray gun is good quality or not? Chinese manufacturers have this differentiation, typically poor Chinese quality and not so much. This one is not of typically poor Chinese quality, it's fine. As to a spray gun, which is more or less okay, it should look nice to an extent. Everything should be tightened, everything should look neat. Undo this, have a look what's in there. You can do that right at the store. Check if it has hollows or scratches. This nozzle should be in a decent shape. The orifice should not be oval. I mean, you should like the looks of it, right? More or less decent spray guns start having this adjustment knob. This is the air flow adjustment. Many people ask. Sometimes they are offered to buy a manometer in a set with a spray gun. To be honest with you, I have a huge heap of those manometers. I don't use them. And you don't need them too. First, they are inconvenient to use when painting. The spray gun assembly is too long and there is a possibility to scratch the roof with it, especially when you are tired. When you paint in a closed garage and had lots of this stuff inhaled. It also has its negative effect on you. You lose your focus. But it comes later. At first, we just paint. We don't care. Right, Uncle Tolle? At a boy! Uncle Tolle is an absolutely golden fellow. Always supports me. This night you should have seen him work. That's crazy. Even the top performers pale in comparison with him. But I digress. Such a spray gun is more than enough for a start. You don't need a manometer on it. What do you expect to see there? You will determine by sound how you should paint. Fully open the compressor unit. Do not adjust the flow on the compressor. Press down the trigger on your spray gun and adjust the airflow with your nozzle fully open. Because when you adjust the air on your compressor unit, is a funny thing. When you try to adjust your airflow with your spray gun nozzle closed, it will create pressure. You press it and it makes and the pressure drops. So you should adjust it when your nozzle is open. Here's another trick. After you adjusted the flow with your nozzle open, you do the painting and you have, for instance, two bar with your nozzle open, maybe 2.3. You let go of the trigger, but the compressor still keeps pumping. And you start painting, due to lack of experience. The experienced ones will do to the side, to remove dust particles and release excessive pressure. And those with little experience may do right away. And the spray gun will thrust five bars, for instance, at one blow. If you adjust it with the open nozzle, the pressure will jump to five. So you spray it at five bar, keeping the gun close to the car body. You get the paint is blown over the car. Too bad. Not nice. 
Therefore, I suggest, personally, my observations. I will not insist on them. Fully open the compressor unit, if not removing this adjustment knob altogether, making the air go straight to the spray gun. Fully open the valve and adjust the flow with the spray gun adjustment knob. Do not listen to anybody, that this thing will be broken, nothing of the kind. Here, not typically Chinese quality gun, so to speak. Everything can be adjusted, and it has a very fine adjustment. You can start from almost not blowing, and add in slightly more and more, up to the point which suits you. And the airflow pressure will not jump up and down. This is very useful to know, by the way. And for a start, as I've told you, such a spray gun will be enough for you. You will paint with this spray gun, get accustomed to it, and put some money aside for a better one. Good ones can be from various manufacturers. Well, among the more popular ones. There are SATA, 4000, 3000 models. There will be STAR. Lots of good spray guns. One more thing which we should discuss. We will discuss an effect called fish eye. Many people wonder what fish eye is, right? Well, they know about the fish, huh? Fish eye and craters. There is an ocean called fish eye. It's when you paint, get in circles like these, lots of them, there is a black dot inside the circle and a big circle like crater on the moon. All this happens, I speak about fisheye, because of oil inside the compressor unit. Here are two reasons. Either you did not degrease the surface, in this case you will have the same crater, but without a black dot inside of it. It looks like fish eye. Or you didn't sand it, making it matte, and paint right on top of the glossy surface. You must not do that. The other reason is if there is some oil inside the compressor unit. But this also can be avoided. One more reason is when you buy a new spray gun, make sure you disassemble it totally. Remove all this and wash everything out, because the spray gun is lubricated when it's due and these transportation lubricants stay inside. If you don't wash them out, you will have fish eyes. Well, first your car will have those, and then when you hand the car to your customer, you will have them as well. It will be good if you have the eyes left in place after this. Compressor unit may also throw some oil, if you don't have a proper moisture separator. In our case, we have a moisture separator installed initially from the factory. Yes, there is a moisture separator. Yes, it does trap the water. Lots of water is gathered here. I drain it, but the effect of having it is honestly none. I will explain why. This moisture separator, in my case, has a ceramic mesh. It traps water which the compressor produces. Before each paint job you drain condensate from it. <coughs> when the compressor heats up, it starts blowing water. And this primary filter traps this water, no doubt. But its volume is very small, the air goes through it very fast, and the air does not have the opportunity to cool down inside the separator. That means that after the filter we anyway have hot air. But where does the hot air come from, you might ask? From the pistons. The pistons move very fast and therefore heat up fast. And when the pistons heat up, the air coming to the receiver also heats up. So I hope everybody studied physics. What happens to hot air when it cools down? Right, condensate. This condensate forms a nice volume of water.
and the compressor starts blowing it to the outlet. Here it is trapped by our moisture separator as best as it can. You could keep an eye on it and drain the excess. Yes, it trapped the most air, but this hot air again rushes down the pipe. The pipe length is around 10 meters on average. My pipe is thick. Why don't I use a thin one? That's because a thick pipe has low heat exchange values. I have a thick oxygen pipe. It does not interact with the external environment. But anyway, after 10 meters the air manages to cool down. So the water is sprayed from your spray gun. Even if you put the moisture separator on the spray gun, it will not solve the problem. Amount of water is very big. You have the effect of it's like moonshine. The vapor comes down the pipe, the pipe is cooled down, and liquid drips from the pipe end. Here your pipe acts as a moonshiner's coil. The longer it is and thinner, like those spiral ones. There are coils in case with moonshine. And also the pipe is thin. Fast heat exchange, fast cool down, fast water output. Don't use such pipes, they are inconvenient to use anyway. In order to not let the hot air come into the pipe, we need the moisture separator. My moisture separator is a quick and dirty homemade one. I have a video about it, but I will show it to you once again. Here it is. I called it Q1, quick and dirty model 1. Why model 1? You can tell this by its legs. The legs were found at a scrapyard and welded blindly. The look is the opposite of awesome, but it works. Down here, as you can see, we have a drain hole. I will make it closer. I have a conical bottom, so that water would drain better. You can see it's skewed a little bit. The pipe, standard one, 100, bottom part and the top are dead end, sort of a thermos. Here's the tube welded, which is the inlet. Here's another tube welded, the outlet. This bottom part is connected to the compressor. This goes to the spray gun. What happens when we connect such, in our case, quick and dirty moisture separator? The air, after getting inside the receiver, bounces off the walls and this pipe cools it down. After which, even if you have condensate coming from this pipe, it stays at the bottom, it does not rise to the top. But this is one thing, trapping oil and condensate. Further on, the air, already clean, comes to the top. And this air is already cooled down meaning that the air inside the pipe has approximately the same temperature as the medium which you paint. It may be a little bit higher, but not so much as to turn the warm air into water. Dimensions and forms of the moisture separator are not so important. You may make it bigger, but you shouldn't make it smaller, though. You may make it out of an empty natural gas cylinder, oxygen cylinder, it doesn't matter. That's why some people say, I have an extra receiver and I have no moisture. Why is that? That's because the air is additionally cooled down in that extra receiver. 
and this cool air is then fed to your pipe, where moisture is usually produced. So by installing such a moisture separator, you get rid of condensate. This is very important. There is also another defect apart from fish eye. Such small dots like bubbles. It's also water getting under the paint. It's no good either. It will all crack and peel off later. So to cut things short, build yourself such a moisture separator and you will spare yourself all the trouble. This moisture separator works as good, if not better, than such moisture traps split in three parts. Yes, they trap moisture, no doubt, but they do not cool down the air. They will trap what comes through them, but let the hot air pass, which will stay in your pipes. And you can't be sure that the separator on the spray gun saves you. You saw me paint with Valeri. It was dry all the time. Why? Because moisture did not reach it. The separator did its job just fine. It also traps oil. I was once painting with a terrible compressor in some village. I told you already about it. And it worked perfectly. No fish eye, nothing. And a couple of words on the compressor unit. So, off the top of my head, I'm not a pro, but I will tell you shortly how to choose one. First, in order to paint well, so that you could work uninterrupted, you need at least a 350, 360, 400 liters per minute. Do not mix it up with the receiver volume. 500 liter receiver is a huge one. As to the receiver, 50 liters will be enough for you, maybe 100. Many people buy compressors with receivers, and I also painted with such machines of 24 liters. Actually, it's considered to be a 25 liter receiver, and its capacity is 200 liters per minute. This is insufficient, since if we take this spray gun, for instance, it consumes 360 liters per minute. Sometimes, if I add more air, when you make your paint a little bit more dense, and if I paint continuously, this volume of air is not enough. You have to wait when the compressor pumps a little bit more. So if you work with a small one, it pumps air all the time, without taking a break. As a result, you wait while it pumps some more, thus you also have moisture. But the problem is your compressor will fail quickly, it will operate uninterrupted. But that's one thing, you will constantly have to wait. You paint it a bit, release air and it starts spitting. You will have to wait all the time while it pumps some more air. I mean, you can paint with it one or two elements. When you start painting five or six or the whole car, it will not be enough. Therefore, I advise you, the difference in price is about $100-$150. I advise you to buy a two-piston unit with a minimum capacity of 350-400 liters. If you can buy 500 liters, that's totally awesome, with a receiver of 50 or 100 liters. Bear in mind that compressor unit capacity is the liters per minute, not the receiver volume. Nothing depends on the receiver volume. You may have a 100 liters receiver, but it does not mean that its operating speed is 400 or 500 liters per minute. It might have a capacity of 260. It only looks good. One more thing. It's better to buy a compressor unit if it has a separate motor. Not a rotor like we have here, but a separate motor. And via a belt gear it rotates your compressor unit where the pistons are located, which pump air. I will show you mine now. This is how it looks like. As you can see, here's the belt gear, from the motor to the compressor pulley, the motor itself with the control unit, filters, you should check them often, oil is added here, you should also check its level frequently. 
receiver is a 50-liter one. Nothing much here, except for manometers and other stuff. This compressor unit is a two-piston one, a 50-liter receiver, and its capacity is 380-400 liters per minute. It has recently started taking longer time to pump, although I cleaned it. I already showed you how to clean it. Here, under the cap, take off these four bolts. There are two plates, valves. Take them off and clean those plates. By no means do that with an abrasive paper. You do that with a thinner. And put it back and reassemble, and compressor unit comes back to life. That's it for today. Subscribe to the channel, those who are not yet subscribed. It's interesting and fun here. I wish you all health. All the best and dough. There are more videos to come, which will be definitely interesting.